Aisha said, my companion, that is the other wives of the Prophet, gathered in the house of Um Salama and said, O oh, Um Salama, by Allah the people choose to send presents on the day of Aisha's turn and we too love the good things that is presents, as Aisha does. You should tell Allah's apostle to tell the people to send their presents to him whenever, wherever he may be or wherever his turn may be. Om Salama said to that to the Prophet and he turned away from her. And when the Prophet returned to her, that is Om Salama, she repeated the same and the Prophet again turned away. And when she told him the same for the third time, the Prophet said, Om Salama, don't trouble my, me by harming Aisha. For by Allah, the divine inspiration never came to me while I was under the blanket of any woman amongst you except her. Sohi al-Bukhari, book number 57, hadith number 119. At the last line, you find the words under the blanket. It clearly indicates to the bed. Husbands do not wear the dresses of their wives, but sleep with them, sharing the same blanket or saddle. So did Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his wives. He slept in or under the sheets of the same clothes with his wives. David Wood made it an opportunity to mend dress and hurried to the conclusion that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wore the garments of his wives, especially of Aisha radhiyallahu anha, and thereby delivered his hateful lectures against the Prophet to prove that he was a cross-dresser. You see and hear how David distorts this hadith. Here's Muhammad's response. Do not injure me regarding Aisha. The revelation does not come to me when I am in the garment of any woman except Aisha. Did you catch that? The revelation, Quranic revelation, <coughs> does not come to me when I am in the garment of any woman except Aisha. In other words, don't complain about Aisha. Allah gives me revelations when I'm wearing Aisha's garments, but not when I'm wearing your garments. So Allah obviously favors Aisha over the rest of you. Now stop asking for equal treatment. The Muslim sources contain more than 30 references to Muhammad wearing women's clothing. I'll include a link to a bunch of examples David should have known, but failed to learn, that any kind of effeminacy, including cross-dressing, is forbidden in Islam, made haram by the Prophet. It is sinful, haram, and is attracting towards the hell. Not only cross-dressing, but also any kind of effeminacy is prohibited in Islam, and it is prohibited by the Prophet himself. You please read the chapter of dress in any hadith books like Sohi al-Bukhari to know that all kinds of deceptive makeup and fashion like tattoo, brow plucking, lipstick, wig and the like are forbidden by the Prophet. And those are haram in Islam. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ordered his followers to evict the effeminate people from their houses. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet cast a feminine men, those men who are in the similitude or assume the manners of women, and those women who assume the manners of men. And he said, turn them out of your houses. The Prophet turned out such and such men, and Umar turned out such and such women. Sohi al-Bukhari, book number 72, Hadith number 774 and book number 82, Hadith number 820. 
And now we see David would present the Prophet of Islam who made cross-dissing haram as a cross-disser. He does not know that the dress code of Islam stands on hard and fast rules, but he has become a regular lecturer of Islam in the social media. To deliver a lecture, to deliver a lecture on Islam, one must have sound knowledge of the Quran and Hadith, which the non-Muslims like him generally lack. Still, people are very eager to hear them. They get mesmerized with their eloquence, but truth is far away from their speech.